Hello and welcome. Welcome to today's session. Uh, hello, Maria. And um, I've added a link there that uh, we'll be using later on. Uh, this is Nellie Deutsch, and today's session is uh, part of uh, teaching and learning online. This is uh, being recorded. Today is uh, May 25th, 2013. And um, I'm going to be sharing a little bit of information on MOOCs and my experiences with organizing uh, and teaching a MOOC, as well as being a learner on a MOOC. So the MOOC is uh, a huge hit these days and uh, something to think about, whether you're an organization trying to get a MOOC going or whether you're uh, an individual, a teacher who wants to share and get others' ideas on it. So a little bit about MOOCs, just to get it started. I'm going to be uh, showing a few videos. Uh, here's the uh, first one on MOOCs. Uh, three of them are by Dave, hello, Helena, by Dave uh, Cormier. Uh, actually, uh, the original MOOCers were uh, from Canada. And that's just a coincidence. It has nothing to do with anything. All right, so the first um, video that I'm going to share, okay, let's get it started here, is this one, I think, but uh, let me see. If... No, that's not the one. And um, so I'm going to go through these since I don't have labels on them. I know that if they're slow, that's not Join the one. Teaching Online facility is not that. I think it's the first one that I tried, but let me try again. And then I'm going to mute. There it is. All right. So a massive open mind. online course is an ecosystem from which knowledge can emerge. In a traditional course, you end up in a social contract with an institution or with an instructor. They have the knowledge and you want that knowledge. So you go to a classroom, you go to an online location, and you engage in this social contract where you go, you've purchased the time, and you will take home the knowledge. They'll judge whether or not you have the appropriate knowledge at the end of that course. In a lot of situations, that's really good. A MOOC is something entirely different. The knowledge contract in a MOOC does not presume that there's one thing that you need to know in a given field. The materials that we study that are part of the syllabus are really just a starting point for the negotiation of knowledge. The outcomes might be as varied as a discussion, a blog post, or a peer-reviewed article. Really, a MOOC is just a catalyst for knowledge. Knowledge in a MOOC is emergent. During those discussions between the participants and between the facilitators, themes are going to begin to emerge. Those themes are going to combine with the course materials to create a really unpredictable knowledge base from which people are going to learn and with which they're going to engage. For the participant in a MOOC, they're going to come out of the course with a far better idea of how their own knowledge matches up against others in the field. But more importantly, they're going to come out with a knowledge network, a network of people and ideas that's going to carry long past the end of that course date. For the field itself, it offers a focused discussion. That discussion may clarify points of debate, or it may push knowledge in that field to new and interesting places. Okay, I hope you got an idea, at least, of um, what a MOOC is and, uh, and how it works. Uh, the idea is that it's open. And let's take a look at what a MOOC is. I'm going to uh, add my voice again. All right, so let's, uh, let's take a look. I want you to think as we go about what Dave Cormier said. And uh, just to give you um, a little background on the uh, course that I'm talking about, I'm talking about teaching and learning online. This is an ongoing course, and uh, there are sessions that are connected to teaching and learning online every single week with me, and we'll have guest presenters as well. And if you're interested in presenting on things connected to teaching and learning online, you are very, very welcome. Just let me know. Uh, the highlights of the course are the following. It's to create courses on WizIQ, but not only on WizIQ, to connect with students in meaningful ways. And here 
is the key. And that's exactly what Dave was talking about when he talked about the MOOC. This is not only for a MOOC, but a MOOC is the idea that you can connect with people, lots of people, in meaningful ways, socially, meaningful ways. Uh, you'll learn to schedule live online classes. This is just for WizIQ and other places add content because what we're talking about is creating courses, scheduling live online classes, adding content. This could be anywhere. It could be on Facebook. It could be on Google Drive. Okay, it doesn't necessarily have to be with IQ. And then you enroll, but once you get your students, it doesn't have to be enroll. It could be sharing the uh, the links to the course and then engaging your students, of course, as I said before, in socially engaging activities. And the social here is really, really important. And then once you get your course up, of course, you want to publish it so that you can get as many participants as possible. The courses can be paid or free. The MOOC, of course, is uh, also paid or free. Uh, there are ideas about making the MOOC cost. All right, so the course that I'm referring to, Teaching and Learning Online, is completely free. Uh, in this month, there were uh, four parts. The first part was Teaching and Learning Online with Course and Learning Management Systems. The second one was Teaching and Learning Online with Moodle. As I said, different ways of creating courses. Next was Teaching and Learning Online with WizIQ. And of course, today's session is about my experiences because that's all I have uh, to share with you. To organize, teach, and learn on a MOOC. And as I've said, I've had experiences since 2008. When I first, actually 2007, when I was involved in a MOOC. So what is a MOOC? Okay, MOOC is about negotiation of knowledge. That means, just as Dave Cormier said, we get together educators, learners, anyone, everyone, you don't have to be an educator, people who want to share information, people who want to learn together, get together in this massive, and this massive is open, and open means that you can go anywhere on the internet. Of course, you can't walk around from class to class, but you can go from one environment to another on the internet, get information, and so on, and it's online, that's the difference. It's completely online. There's no uh, blended MOOCs yet. It's online. And of course, it's so-called a course. Uh, the word course is debatable. Some think that a course should have a beginning and an end. And MOOCs don't necessarily have this. They're so open that it's hard to tell uh, where there's a beginning and where there's an end. Others think that uh, it's not really a course, but it's more like a uh, an open environment for learning. Now, what do you do? If you're a student, you can have the following options. You can follow along, just follow whatever is there and do absolutely nothing. You can do a MOOC for credit, and then you do have to do things because you want to get credit. And for credit, sometimes they charge for MOOCs. You may want to be part of the learning network and just connect with people for learning. Or you want to finish a project. And this is exactly what Dave Cormier um, mentions. And I hope I'll be able to get rid of this. I got stuck last time. And I think I'm going to get stuck today, too. I'm not going to be able to go on to the next one. Uh, let's see. Maybe I can. No, this is what happened last time. And it seems that I'm completely stuck. All right. So I've, I've had a few um, other... Um, Let's see, maybe I can do something else. I had a few videos that I wanted to share with you today, but it looks like um, I'm stuck here with one that won't go away, and I can get back to the other ones. So um, even if I um, 
close this one. It won't allow me to go into the other ones. All right, so um, if you uh, Google the word MOOC, M-O-O-C, you'll get videos by Dave Cormier, and I think that Dave really does represent what the MOOC is about. One of the MOOCs that I organized on WizIQ, and you can do it on any topic um, of interest, just like you would a course topic, you can do a MOOC. A MOOC can be short. You can have a MOOC for three weeks. You can have a MOOC for a week. You can have it for two weeks, 10 weeks, uh, for a month, half a year. I took a MOOC for a year and a half on Second Life, how to create furniture and different things in Second Life with the European um, Union in 2008. It was called Muvation, and it was a MOOC, a year and a half. Uh, the MOOC that I gave, maybe you took it, was teaching online, facil facilitating online learning and teaching. And the highlights were teaching online, enabling attitudes to learning, setting goals, active learning. Now, the MOOC had 1,324 participants. That's quite a bit for a MOOC, but MOOCs go up to 100 and 200,000. And the MOOC that I'll be uh, hosting along with WizIQ is called Moodle MOOC, and it's the first uh, MOOC of its kind. There has never been a MOOC, a massive open online course on Moodle. There are Moodle MOOCs, which are conferences, three-day, uh, two-day conferences that are online, and I Moodle MOOC. But this is a MOOC on WizIQ, and um, I think this will be the first of many. I think they're going to start having uh, other Moodle MOOCs elsewhere. So uh, what is the course highlights? I created it on WizIQ, which means that you can create a MOOC anywhere. The course highlights are a Moodle layout. What does a Moodle look like? creating engaging activities, not only on the MOOC, but in general, online activities, learning and teaching online, WizIQ on Moodle, and going beyond the Moodle MOOC. Now, there are a few uh, participants on the, uh, on the MOOC. Uh, this is a short video that you might want to tap into. On the MOOC, if you Google Moodle MOOC, you should be able to get everything. Uh, let's see, I, I may want to screen share and then we'll be able to uh, get the videos for that. I'm just going to go through and then I'll come back. These are some of the presenters, and not only presenters. Um, the original people behind the MOOCs were this person, this is George Simmons, uh, Stephen Downs, and Brian Alexander. Brian Alexander actually coined the term MOOC with Dave Cormier in uh, 2008 when the first MOOC appeared. And it was facilitated by George Simmons and Stephen Downs. Stephen Downs, Brian, uh, Van Stevens, that is um, the leader of the Webheads. He started the Webhead community. And of course, uh, Martin Dogiamis, who um, actually developed the Moodle. So he's the fall. He's going to be at the opening uh, ceremony on May 31st. Stephen Downs is going to present on June 15 on connectivism, which is very much a part of MOOCs and on online learning, teaching, and the MOOC. George Simmons is going to be in Europe, so he's not sure of his uh, internet connectivity. So he's going, he volunteered to help um, in the background with the uh, course itself, if he has time. Of course, uh, Brian Alexander is also a very busy person, and he volunteered to speak on a very interesting topic on uh, computers and on online learning and how they're connected. In addition, uh, Van Stevens is also going to be uh, heading 
a learning together, which she started a while back, and getting teachers together and learning together, because the MOOC is about what these people have in common is a passion for learning in an open environment. Martin Dogiyama started the Moodle because he wanted an open e-learning system that included everybody. And I think that's really, really important to include everyone and to have an open system where it's not only about school, it's not only about courses, it's about having an open exchange of information and learning together. And that's what everyone here um, has in common. The facilitators are myself, uh, Dr. Nancy Zengron, Dr. Ludmilla Smirnova, uh, Dr. Rema Sharma, Judy who's Behrens, who's currently doing her uh, doctorate, and of course, Jason R. Levine, who's going to be our edutainer, and he now works for Wiz IQ. So uh, these are the facilitators. You're welcome to join in and help along. We're always looking for volunteers. Of course, everybody is a volunteer in this MOOC. No one's paying anyone for anything. So um, it's in the spirit of open and not just open online learning, but open in every sense of the word because it's not only free, but it allows everyone to share and to learn together. So I'm going to uh, screen share some of the videos that I wanted to share before and hopefully it'll work but maybe it won't. Let's see if uh, it connects. Okay, it looks like it's uh, not going to connect. I guess my Java is probably not up to date. I'm using a Mac and um, Macs need to uh, don't have Adobe um, on them. They don't usually need them, but um, it is required for some of the screen sharing tools. So uh, let me just take you to some of the places where you can uh, follow up on the uh, videos. Okay, so I'm going to get the links for you so you can watch them. Uh, on what is a MOOC, I find this one exceptionally good because it captures uh, everything uh, about MOOCs and the spirit of MOOCs. And when I talk about the spirit of MOOCs, I mean the first kind of MOOCs, not the kind that started in 2012 where there's so much money involved and where everything seems to uh, connect to um, make money. All right, so here, here's the, uh, the link. Okay, that's the link to um, the MOOC. If you could watch it now, it's by Dave Cormier. It's just about four minutes. If you could watch it on your own system and just to get an idea, and share what you got out of it. Notice that you don't have to um, get everything out of everything. And I think that's one of the misconceptions. And I think a MOOC actually helps us understand that the information that's out there is not distracting because learning is supposed to be multi. In other words, our minds do not focus the way uh, maybe instructors would like them to focus. In other words, it's not, you know, the Pavlovian idea of what you put in. You put in certain things and you get out certain things. No. Um, there's a lot of information out there and we take whatever is relevant. That's how learning is done. You don't have to encompass everything. You don't have to absorb anything. You know, and it's ridiculous to expect it. So you take whatever you find relevant, and that's what's going to work for you. Whatever is relevant. Now I'm going to um, see if I can uh, try again with the uh, videos. Let's see if I have better luck now. 
and see if I'm able to get rid of this one. Close it up perhaps and see uh, what happens. Yep, I got it. Okay, so I figured it out. I can share the videos with you. Uh, the next video is this one. So let me share it with you. Okay, here's the second one. The massive. Yeah, well, I'd like to point out that what he said is completely correct. If you want to learn something, you go to a school or you take a course in an organized place. So listen carefully to what he says because I think this is really important for the online environment. So discussion forum that's part of the course. Your MOOC will have some way of gathering all the reflections on your course together. It might be a tag or some other method. Let's say your course tag is thingamajiggets2011. Maybe you already have a blog or you can set one up online. You can write a reaction to one of the readings, add a course tag to it, and post it to Twitter. And then, probably, nothing happens. No one grades it. No one comments. You've declared yourself, but no one seems to have noticed. You need a network. You need to follow some other people reflecting on the material and make some connections. Go back and take a look at the communications you've been getting from the facilitators. Do a search for the course tag. Find some people's work, read a few posts, and comment on them. Those connections and your comments are what the course is all about. Better yet, go back to your spot and write a thoughtful reply to someone's questions or concerns. Tell them about it. Make connections. There is a discussion going on, and a discussion is probably what you took this course for. After a few weeks, it's probably time to cluster. During the first couple of weeks, the readings and commenting, You'll notice that there are a couple of other people whose interest in thingamajiggets is very close to yours. You'll find that you're returning to their work more often, that they're commenting on your work more often, that you're connecting. You don't need to connect with everyone. Find yourself a cluster of people who are focused on what you're interested in. A group of people for you to work with. Maybe even a community that might share ideas after the course is over. Finally, and this is especially important to me, you need to focus. Even with all the positive connections and the interesting readings and the learning about thingamajiggets, I always find that a little over halfway through an open course, my mind starts to wander. Maybe you're not sure what you're trying to do with the course. If you're not trying to finish the course for credit, why are you trying to do it? Maybe you have an idea about something that you could do with thingamajiggets at work and decided to post your idea on your blog. You can draw in your new cluster to help you with your plan. Start a project, maybe a paper, maybe a grant and use the rest of the course to finish it. After 10 weeks, you'll know lots more about thingamajiggets. You'll have made some valuable and useful professional connections and have a project that you can apply right back to your work. You'll have succeeded. Orient, declare, network, cluster, and focus. MOOCs are open. And that includes being open to different ways of success. This is my way. All right, so that's a little about Seat. And trust me, many of us had a lot of problems before uh, when we took our first MOOCs and this information would have been very, very valuable. But we didn't have it in those days. Okay, in those days, Mike didn't, uh, sorry, Dave didn't tell us how to do things. So it was a bit confusing and a bit difficult. I'd like to share Okay, we'll have uh, time for questions. I'd like to share a, uh, a MOOC that we're going to have, as I said, the Moodle MOOC, and tell you that it's up to you. In other words, nobody can make any course a success. No teacher, no facilitator can do the learning for you. It's up to you to take the steps, become active, to connect and that's what it's all about it is about connecting and it's really up to us up to you and me um you know a course is successful if you give it all you have if you're interested if you're not interested then you know don't be hard on yourself and simply go on to the next mooc or try to get the most because sometimes we think that it's not the right mooc for us and yet it is it is and we don't know that it is. So it's a good idea to try and find out 
whether the MOOC is actually for you or not. So I'm going to share a little bit about the upcoming MOOC. I hope it's the facilitating one. online no, learning. It's All you not. have to do is click on and roll now right here. That's not the one, but this is. So here it is. <laughs> Oh, it looks like it's not going to go on to the next one. Okay, that's great. It looks like it's not going to go on to the next one, which is just fine. But you can get this video online. As I said, and I say over and over again, all these are actually uh, tutorials. I've added them to the course, and I'm going to share the uh, the information with you now. I'll start by, if if you can't see the chat, it's at the bottom. Okay, so you need to pop it up. I would show you if my screen uh, sharing device was working. Let me try it again. Maybe I'll just keep it on and maybe it'll wake up uh, during the course. But let me just, during the uh, live session, let me just share a few things with you on how to, uh, because you might want to do this, how to start your MOOC. And I encourage you to do it. I mean, the value in giving an online course, whether it's a mini MOOC or a real big MOOC or whatever MOOC it is, is really a, a learning experience for whoever is organizing it. And it's nice to be able to uh, understand concepts better, of course, when we actually uh, either teach them or share them. So there's a little bit about one of the MOOCs, the uh, facilitating and teaching online uh, that I created, just to show you uh, where it is. In addition, I'm going to share the link to the upcoming MOOC, the Moodle MOOC. It doesn't have as many participants as the other one so far, but who knows? Um, we may get more. There's still a couple of days left until Friday, almost a week, but not quite, until we start the, um, the Moodle MOOC. Okay, right now there are 818 participants, and we'll see if the numbers rise. I think that a lot of people are hesitant about MOOCs because they think the MOOCs are like the, uh, the old... Uh, school MOOCs where uh, you don't really get a sense of what's happening and that's a shame because in the university MOOCs that's exactly what happens you don't get a sense of what's going on because you don't connect with anyone you're on your own and you're just getting these videos I don't know if any of you have taken the university MOOCs but they're quite different Oh, 820, Helene. I saw 818. So uh, did you just join as two people? <laughs> Sorry, there it is. Okay, there's the, um, the syllabus for the Moodle MOOC. You're invited to invite your friends. It's not really about Moodle. It is about Moodle. But it's just a way to connect in one, what I think is a great free uh, course management system that's completely free. Coursera is not free. You do not qualify to teach through Coursera. It's only for universities. Ed, Edfex or whatever. And then there's a new one. They're, they're coming up as... They're expensive. They're costing universities thousands and thousands of dollars. While the MOOC, the uh, Moodle, sorry, is completely free. I'm also going to share the link to the... Uh, to the opening ceremony. We're going to have a lot, it's going to be completely different. The opening ceremony is going to be actually uh, a show. Uh, we're going to have, uh, if everything works out, we're going to have guitars, <laughs> we're going to have music, singing music, and it's all going to be live, but it's going to be like a show, and it'll be probably the first of its kind. Uh, it's completely different. It's anti-school. 
anti, uh, unstructured as far as universities go, because that's where I'm coming from. You're coming. Yes. Yeah, so if you, if you'd like to play an, an instrument, uh, that would be great so far. I think we've got guitars, we've got singing, we've got Jason R. Levine, who's going to be rapping. So it should be a real celebration. <laughs> Uh, for the ceremony, plus, of course, Martin Dogeyamas is coming. He was going to bring his children because he thought he was going to have them for the weekend, but he's not, so he's coming by himself. But you're invited to bring your friends and families and uh, enjoy the fun because it is going to be fun. Yes, that's what I was thinking, Maria. I was thinking that maybe you could play the guitar, and uh, but you can still practice if you're interested. Get together with someone else online and practice together for the event, but this could be done for other events as well. That's the idea. The idea, of course, is to, if you could, maybe with Helena, maybe Helena has a voice, you could sing together. Um, you know, everything is open and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I'd like to share here. I think we've gone through, um, just about everything. Yeah, it's going to be uh, something really special. Okay, for those of you who came late, I'm just going through. We talked about negotiating knowledge, and that's what the MOOC should be about. See, a MOOC is a way for us to advance. It's a way for people to share what they have and together to build something more. So it's very participatory, and it's definitely not connected to any organization but it's completely open, as I've said. We saw the video on that. And it's collaborative, and your success is your ability to collaborate. Uh, what someone said, and I think it's really nice, is that what a MOOC should be is a course that goes, even though it's called a course, it should go beyond content delivery. And that's what happens at most universities. And that's what's happening with the uh, university MOOCs. They are still uh, test-based, content-based delivery. And the MOOC should go beyond that. It should go into uh, teaching and learning, but not so much teaching as engaging in learning. Everybody should be a learner in a MOOC and learning critical thinking skills in a MOOC, not necessarily teaching it. You know, the word teaching has come to mean a very, very uh, dogmatic kind of thing. And then it's about learning. And it's not machine learning, okay? It's not learning in a cold computer lab. It's learning with people and connecting with people because that's what it's about. It's about people. And uh, the next question is, can you have a MOOC in a classroom if it's uh, a massive open online course? Okay, can it be blended to work in a classroom too? And the question is, of course, why not? Okay, why not? And I see Maria. I don't know what you mean. Yes, it's about us. Exactly. That's exactly what it's about. And um, I see that in the first, in the ceremony, the opening ceremony, uh, so far, but Helena, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe there are more, 847 have joined, but there's room for 1,999. So Helena, do you have the link uh, nearby so that you can share it uh, with us? If not, I think I have it. Let's see who gets there first. Okay, I think I'm going to get there first. Sorry, I had a head start. There we go. So that's, if you haven't joined, I don't know how many are there now. No, not only, some people don't have their pictures up. But um, I think you do, Maria. You must be here somewhere. No, you're not. Maybe you haven't joined. So this is your chance to, uh, to join. There'll be uh, people from everywhere around the globe. Um, and I mean literally everywhere around the globe. And it should be a lot of fun. Now, 
um, we're open for questions. So uh, you're there. Uh, there's Helena. Okay, I'm going to give you uh, writing tools so that you can point to your name. Where are you? And if you're not there, maybe you'd like to join now. Or at least I'm going to give you writing tools so that you can. There we go. Hello, John. Are you new to uh, see? Oh, Benoit, I've seen your name before. But John Alecatus, where are you from? If you could add in the chat where you're from, I guess people came in a bit later after I started. So uh, this is Nellie Deutsch, if you don't know me. And Maria, yes, Maria, I thought you were there. But I took this a, a while back, so maybe um, there's a newer one. This is for the opening ceremony, Maria. So there it is. If not, you can add your name now. So if you're not there, you've got the writing tools. Um, if you go to uh, the left, you'll see an A. A stands for uh, text. If you hover your mouse over it, you'll be able to, um, to add your name or anything else that you'd like to add. All right, so uh, there's also a place where you can ask questions on the MOOC for those of you who are interested. I'd like to also share a little bit, an image here. Now, guess what this is? Any ideas? That's okay. Hello and welcome from Peru, from Lima. I hope you joined the, uh, the MOOC, the Moodle MOOC. All right, so any guess uh, what this is? I'll give you voice too, so you can speak. Okay, there, let's see how that works. Ooh, I hear noise. I wonder where that's coming from. You need to have a headset. If you think I don't have one, I do. You need to have a headset so it doesn't make a lot of noise. John, if you're new, I can... There, I see the Benoit, Helena, doesn't want to hear herself. I'm not giving uh, webcams, so you, I shouldn't embarrass you. But if Maria, you've got, I think you've got um, the mic, if you'd like to ask questions. Hello. Someone has the mic. I think it's you, Maria, but maybe I'm wrong. If you don't want to speak, just put a mute on your mic and I'll get the point. Okay, I think it's just Maria now. Everybody else uh, doesn't really have uh, a good connection, I guess, or their mics. Oh, Helena, yes, of course. Okay, uh, I gave you the mic. I can even give you the webcam. Oh, I didn't get permission sorry hi everybody i can i uh, yeah i can be seen <laughs> i just uh, and nelly i'm extremely interested in all those things and the mooc is something that i would like to join i would like to give my uh, classes i would like to schedule the course but uh, there's one thing i can't uh, understand what happened to his IQ. We are having such a big technical problems, and uh, I want to give a class. Or 